go. Good. W welcome to the uh, September 29, 2016 meeting of the Sherburn Board of Selectmen. Uh, we'll ask if our town administrator would please read the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First, we will um, add topics not reasonably anticipated by the chair 48 hours in advance and vote to approve or amend the agenda. And a public comment period. And then volunteer recognitions of Chucky Blaney, Ron Buckler, Thurza Campbell, Pat Cassell, Helen Cutter. Bruce Ekman, Richard Goddard, Barbara Kintorsky, Peter Lipperton, Corey Lincoln, and Ralph Lowell. And then consideration of Farm Pond sticker for Dover Sherburn Education Fund Gala on November 4th. And then a consideration of one day liquor license for Norfolk Hunt Club for their event on October 1st. Consideration of event permit for Forest and Trails annual Hunter Pace to be held on November 13th. And then for consideration of appointments. Conservation Commission has one open seat and we've had three applicants. Sherburn Cultural Council, three seats with three applicants. Town Forest Committee, one seat with one applicant. Sherburn Housing Partnership, two seats with two applicants. Traffic Safety Committee, two seats with two applicants. And then consideration of rooftop, rooftop solar project at CM&D Garage. And then town, uh, town Administrator Report, Selectman Reports. And then the meeting calendar, consideration of minutes, consideration of payroll warrant. At that time, we had adjourned to executive session, not to return to open session. And I should read the. What's that? I should read the whole thing. Well, we can read it when we go into executive okay. session. Okay. Yeah. For the purposes of discussing litigation. Yeah. There was one item to add to this agenda, which was whether we would vote to release a town council opinion relating to an interpretation of the zoning bylaw at the request of the Chairman of the Board of Appeals. So can we get a, a motion? Well, I have two little things. Oh, has a couple things too, okay. First, I, I found four applicants, not One of them three. had withdrawn. Even so though it was one, in the package, one of them withdrew. Okay, I was going to ask yeah, about that. Uh, at, at an earlier meeting, David announced that one of them had withdrawn. Okay, and the other is, I wonder if we, somewhere up front we could do a a, uh, a few words about a former town employee who's passed away. Absolutely. Yep. Let's let's make a let's amend the agenda to add that and and add uh, the release of the or consideration of the release of the town council opinion. Okay. So, so moved. moved by Paul. Do we have a second. <clears throat> okay. Any for the discussion? All in favor? Aye. Great. Okay. Good. Um, Paul, would you want to have that discussion now? Yeah, it's a good place. Good. The beginning. We've had a long serving town employee. Our building and gas inspector since 1963 has passed away. This is Ray Grenier, also known as Ray the Plumber. He's a long-term resident of the town of Sherburne since 1933. He served as a lieutenant on the Sherburne Fire Department in the 1970s. And of course, our plumbing inspector. Could I ask that we all rise in honor and in memory of his passing? For a moment of silence. Now we have uh, public comment, and I don't see anybody signed up for public comment. <coughs> so we will go on to uh, volunteer recognition. Actually, that's at 610. Do you think there's anybody who's going to show up, Diane? Are you expecting well, anybody Well, no, else? there are people coming. Okay, so, so let's hold off on that for a second. Um, item two. What's that? We can item go to item two, two right which there. is the consideration of a farm pond sticker for the DS Educational Fund Gala. Is anybody here for that? Great. Okay. Do you want to? Yeah, you want to advertise the gala and? Yeah. And incidentally, ask us about a farm pond sticker. I'm uh, Sarah O'Connell, and I'm requesting a um, farm pond sticker for the Dover Sherwin Education Gala on um, November 4th. So, somebody from Dover can win it? Or somebody from Sherwin can win it? Okay. And, and can I ask you a quick question, though? How much is a 
is a pond sticker if you don't live in Sherburn? Uh, what is it? What is a pond sticker cost? I think it's three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars for a lot of weddings. Yes. So hopefully it will be a Sherburn resident who wins it. Right. They probably won't bid if it gets above whatever it costs. To you would be surprised Sherburn how much people pay yeah. for these right. things. Yeah. It's all about the children. It's not it is, but the Do Do Dover children would be three hundred dollars and up. So that's that's much better purchase if they do it. So we'll just push the Dover people together. Okay, excellent. <laughs> when is this event? In uh, it's at the Wells of Country Club on November fourth. Okay. And, and it benefits the four schools. Great. Yeah. Good. And it's run by the Dover Sherman Education Fund. The Education Fund. Yes. Okay. Great. Anybody else? Any questions? About well, this, this no? is a thing we've done in every in the year. Past every year, so I move approval. Second. Okay. All in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, it's almost six ten, but not quite. Um, do we have. Do you want, should we do the liquor licenses? I don't know that we need anybody here for those. <clears throat> sure. Unless there's yeah. an issue. Jeez, uh, and I hear David. Do you want to just walk us through the? This is a request uh, for a one-day liquor license for an event held by the Norfolk Hunt Club for October first. The license is actually for Zaftig's Delicatessen, um, who's the, the caterer. Uh, we've gotten all the appropriate signatures, the proof of insurance, um, all the documentation that is there. Okay. I move approval. Second. Okay, move and second. Any discussion or questions? Looks like it's going to be well catered as Zaftig Steli is catering it. So. There's a lot of energy burn. On yeah. horse racing, so that's good. I mean, the horse riding. All right, good. So we have a move in a second. All in favor? Aye. And we have a license to sign in here, Diane. Uh, this is yeah, one, one day corn license. Great. <coughs> Diane, I recall. Uh, a number of months ago when we had a, a question about liquor, one day liquor licensing and our town council made some recommendations for changing our process a little bit. It would probably make sense to follow up with her and, and see. She was actually going to be here tonight, but we told her that uh, <coughs> was going to be about 25. To talk about so liquor licensing? She was if you had any questions, she said she would want No, she was just going to answer questions when yeah. you took up the liquor license. Okay, I see. Yeah, it might be something we can get her advice on, though, in terms of setting up a, a different process. Okay. Yeah. All right, and uh, an event permit for the Hunter case as well. That's Forest and Trails annual Hunter case. Move of approval. Okay. Second. Move and seconded. Oh, is anybody here from Hunter Pace? Or? The horse and trails. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Great. And that's on November 13, 2016, and it's a. Uh, I guess it's an event involving uh, riding. I think they're gathering at the mm -hmm. school, right? Yes. Okay. Great. Good. And now it's 6:10, so we will start the um, the recognitions, I guess. And Paul, if you. I want to do the uh, Oh, I'd love today. to. Thank you. Thank you for letting me do this. The Board of Selectmen has been embarking on a program to give recognition to the many volunteers who make this town government work. This is our second group of people that we will be recognizing tonight. There will be other groups being recognized on a regular basis. So if your name is not called this time, that does not mean that we aren't going to recognize you. There are many volunteers, and we try to do groups of between 10 and 15 per meeting. So having said all that, The people we want to recognize tonight are Chucky Blaney, 
for her service on the Cemetery Commission and the 300th Anniversary Committee. I don't see her here. Well, you might say these are all 20 year plus service uh, volunteers. Yes. Yes, thank you. Ron Buckler for his service on the Local Emergency Planning Committee, the Municipal Right to Know Coordinator, the Recycling Committee, and his service as constable for the town. Thursa Campbell for her service on the Recycling Solid Waste Committee, Library Trustee, Leland Farm, Development Plan Committee, Personnel Board, Tree Policy Committee, Town Beautification Committee, Disability Advisory Committee, Municipal Campus Extension Committee. Pat Cassell for her service on the Municipal Building Committee, the Storm Emergency Committee, the Farm Pond Advisory Committee, the Reuse 23 Washington Street Committee, and Dover Sherburn Cable TV. So Pat, since you're here, why don't you come forward? On behalf of the board and the town, thank you for your service. Next is Helen Cuddy for her service as a Registrar of Voters, Council on Aging, Elderly and Disabled Taxation Committee, and Elder Housing Committee. Bruce Ekman for his service as a Library Trustee. Richard Goddard, Traffic Safety Committee, Designer Selection Committee, Sherburn Housing Partnership. I don't see him either. Barbara Kantarski for her service on the Open Space and Recreation Plan Implementation Committee, the Bay Circuit Greenbelt Committee, Groundwater Protection Committee, Bay Circuit Implementation Committee, Land Acquisition Committee, Registrar of Voters, the Open Space Committee, and the Advisory Committee. And Barbara, since you are here, on behalf of the Board of Selectmen and the Town of Sherbert, we present the Certificate of Appreciation. Thank you for your service to the town. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> Next is Peter Lefferton. For service on the Elder Housing Committee, the Elder Housing Study Committee, the library as the library trustee, elderly housing action committee, local emergency planning committee, <coughs> board of health. Focus 2 Group, Woodhaven Sites Study Committee, Groundwater Oversight Committee, Town Offices Police Station Study Committee, Groundwater Protection Committee, Police Station Building Committee, Municipal Sign Committee, the Historic District Commission, and the Capital Budget Committee. Corey Lincoln, for her service on the Affordable Housing Study Committee, the Revenue Enhancement Committee, the Sherburn Housing Partnership, the Focus 2 Group, Advisory Committee, and Town Moderator. 
And last, Ralph Lowe, the second, Designer Selection Committee, Library Trustee, Council on Aging. For all of those who are not here, again, on behalf of the Board of Selectmen and the Town of Sherbur, we thank you for your service. We have these certificates. Our Assistant Town Administrator will be in touch to distribute those certificates to those who were not able to attend. Thanks, Paul. All right. Um, so, I think we're up to, and we're way ahead of time, but we're up to board, committee, and departmental business. We have some, some appointments to do. Dave, are you expecting anybody? I can see some conservation people are here, but are you expecting anybody for any of the other appointments? Um, no. In other words, is there any reason to wait? We can start this, right? Yeah, I was All right, expecting it. All right, so the, fir the first one we have is Conservation Commission. Uh, you want to walk us through this, David? That's the one you might want to hold off and do on time. Yes. <laughs> Yes. More people showing up. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, there's a half a room full of people. Put the traffic sit. I mean, you might want to just do it in a reverse order. Do, do them. That's fine. That's why I asked that before. So we should start from the bottom. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Don't have to three appointments. appointments. Okay. Well, they're all reappointments. So we just start with Sherburn Cultural Council. David, why don't you give us a, a heads up on this one? In the Sherburn Cultural Council, there is um, two vacant seats that have been advertised, and the applicants are Leela Hovey or Lila Hovey, I'm sorry, for a term to expire June 15th, 2018, and Alicia Goganian for a term to expire June 15th, 2017. This is here three. Oh, I'm sorry. There were three seats. And Lisa Easley, Sherburn Cultural Council, uh, term to expire June 15th, 2019. I had a... Uh, so there are three seats with three applicants. Question about this. Because two of them are under the age of 18, and I'm not sure if people who are under the age of 18 are eligible to be voting members of committees as opposed to associate members or the like. So I wonder if you could ask town council when she arrives if it's okay if it's okay i'm fine with it i'm not i'm not aware of any local bylaw prohibiting it but i don't know maybe there's something at the state i don't think there is but the last bar yeah so could i request that be held so so we'll hold that one too okay or do you want to approve it pending well, why don't we just hold it so we have an answer to Paul's question before we take votes. Um, all right, next, uh, Town Forest Committee. Maybe we can get through this one. What do you think? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> is the appointment for the Town Forest Committee of Bob Ambos. This is a reappointment for a term to expire June 15th, 2019. So moved. One seat and one applicant. So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? All right, all in favor. All right, Bob Ambos, thank you for agreeing to serve again. And next, Sherburn Housing Partnership. The Sherburn Housing Partnership already had five members, and they were looking to get seven full. So this will keep complete that committee. Um, Libby Yon for a term to expire June 15th, 2019, and Chris Decker for a term to expire June 15th, 2019. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, all, all in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. 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 Okay. This, this is a really strong committee, and those are two great <coughs> additions to that committee. Uh, it's fantastic, um, and uh, hopefully they are already, I know, up and running. So hopefully yes. we'll, we'll see the fruits of those labors pretty soon. Uh, let's see what's next is uh, traffic safety, two seats for two applicants. On Traffic Safety Committee, there are two seats that have been advertised, and we had two applicants. Um, the appointments would be for Carol Mansfield for a term to expire June 15th, 2019, and Susan Tyler, June 15th, 2019. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay, great. 
great. Thank you to uh, those two as well. Well, Sean, it's still pretty early yeah, for a 635 appointment. That was way too fast. <laughs> Want to talk about any of those people? <laughs> well, we, we, can, we can hold off another 15 minutes, I think. Um, David, you can give us a hiring update. Yeah. Um, the three positions we've been trying to hire was the fire chief, the finance director slash town accountant, and the board of health agent. Um, the fire chief selection committee was appointed by the board of selectmen a few weeks ago, and they've met twice now, I think. And Neil McPherson was voted the uh, chair, and Josh Buckler was um, elected vice chair, and they've met three times so far. Um, the Board of Health Agent position closed um, last Friday. There were eight applicants for that position, and they've all been forwarded to the Board of Health, and the Board of Health will have to meet and decide what process they want to follow. But I did speak to Chris um, Quinn today, and um, he'd like to have me involved in those interviews, so I'll attend those whenever, whatever their process is. Um, before you leave that, I several times have suggested that we make sure that the health agent is available during business hours here in Sherburne to meet with people who have applications, particularly 40B applications. Is there any way that we as a board can make such a request of the uh, Board of Health so that it's clear from a point of view of I, this board's and this town's relationship with people who are trying to undertake improvements to their properties, developers who uh, are coming forward with different projects, that they have a uh, resource during business hours. I um, added language to the job posting that said um, the availability must be during regular business hours, on-call weekend, evening hours, um, and be available on short notice. Um, but the um, office hours are um, approved by the Board of Health. So what we've done is implement a, a, a reporting of when those hours are. So after a couple of weeks, we'll be able to look to see when those hours are being um, actually worked. So um, I'm not aware of any way that you can restrict the work of the Board of Health to certain hours. Would it help if we made a request? I think we've made the request, but you, it always helps to reiterate it. by making a motion. <laughs> Would you entertain a motion to sure. request the Board of Health in the selection of a permanent employee uh, give priority to those who are available during regular business hours of 9 to 4 on weekdays? I guess, I guess the only question, Paul, is whether that's properly in front of us given the agenda this is coming up during town administrator report or hiring in terms of a, a formal vote on it. I, I think the, the request you've made is pretty clear. I don't know how anybody could miss what, what your sense of this is, but I don't want to be criticized as okay. we were at another draw. meeting for we could we're trying to vote something that's not on the agenda. If you could figure out a way to do it, though, tell we me. We could toss it on the um, August, I mean the uh, 5th agenda, October 5th. Sure. sure. That's fine. That won't be too late? No. No, they don't meet till next week to, to even discuss their project process. David, when is your, uh, what, what, where is the fire department process? You said they've met three times, but do we know what the next steps are and where they are in the process? I haven't touched base with Neil about the process, but maybe Chuck can say a few words on yeah, where we they are right now. <clears throat> narrowed a, there were a substantial number of applications, several strong ones. 
and we have requested eight to come in person or one is stationed in Europe right now to do it by Skype for interviews uh, beginning next Tuesday and the interviews are all scheduled will be all scheduled within the next two weeks so our plan that's is the interview with the full with the full search committee is that the search committee and that's not the full assessment then the will narrow the field the intent is to narrow the field that will come in for the full assessment center and that'll be in public in a public yeah. session right, right. good uh, and what's the third <clears throat> the uh, finance director town accountant position we had 19 applicants um, interested in that position I've gone through and scored them and separated them as far as um, what their experience is whether they have municipal experience or not CPA I mean, certified municipal accountant or, or those kind of things um, we've had or I have a, a team put together and we're meeting next week to uh, go through and just finalize the process and the goal is to have you know at least make an offer within the next couple of weeks so you've narrowed the 19 field of 19 is that no I, I want to work with the team to narrow it down okay. but I've gone through everyone and listed out their work experience into a, a matrix type thing so okay. we discuss it easier to pull, pull, go through yeah can you tell us who the team is uh, yeah um, George Morrill Mary Wolf um, Heather Peck, um, Mark Brandon. <laughs> Did you uh, know you were on that team? <laughs> 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 Thanks for doing that. Even before this. <laughs> there's, what, there's a fifth member I can't remember. It's not me. No. <laughs> no. <clears throat> it's not a slip. What? You, David, you're the fifth wheel. No, I'm not a fifth wheel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you. Good. Anything else on the town administrator? No. Okay. It's Grace Shepherd. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, Grace, Grace. is the, Grace is the yeah. other. Oh, Grace, Grace knows she's on it. Yeah, she, she does. Should we pay him? Want to do payroll? Yeah, go make a motion. It should take a while. Make a motion. I move to sign the payroll form. Okay, there's a second on that. Like slowly. Yeah. yeah. We'd, we'd like to think about. We're going to discuss it for a while. <laughs> Second. All right. All in favor of approving the payroll warrant for David. And and, and we were going to put on this agenda, which we didn't do, David, the uh, the process whereby yeah. this would just be signed yeah. rather than having come to a full meeting. We were going to talk about the Municipal Modernization Act and some of the open meeting law changes, and um, the town clerk is out of town. Sweet. You want to do that with the town clerk in the room? Okay, good idea. All right. Well, Should we go back and ask legal counsel the yeah, questions we, we were going to ask? Yeah, so, so, so uh, town council. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, we had a question raised by one of the board members concerning the ability of uh, students who are under 18 to serve as a full member on the cultural committee. Um, the question was whether someone who's not 18 can be a committee member or they, whether they have to be an auxiliary member, a full voting member, I guess is the question. So would there have any type of um, adjudicatory authority? I would say yes, you have to be 18. We would certainly have been advisory committee set up in towns that don't have any uh, you know, authority to make final decisions on behalf of the town in which you know, high school students and so on have been put on you know, for you know, parks or it's the Sugar and Cultural Committee, and I couldn't tell you what their charge is, but maybe somebody here knows. Well, they distribute money and oh, grants yes, yes, to yes. different uh, cultural programs. But so I, I mean, again, I would say that for something like that, if you're spending money on behalf of the town, it should be 18 or old. Okay. 18 or All right, so and do we know whether these people are 18 or older, these students? All right, so we want to put this off for another. <coughs> well, I'm talking about associate members or something. We need to adjust our form. We don't ask them how old they are. Okay, well, I, I'm sure that's easy enough for them to tell us. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, maybe we can put this on a later, a later agenda. And well, there uh, is one who's who's an adult. 
Can we put her on? It's fine. So we want to make that motion? Yeah, if I can get her name. Okay, I think it's uh, Lisa Easley. Lisa Easley, move to appoint her. Okay. Her term to expire June 15, 2019. Okay, do we have a second? Second. That? second. Okay, all in favor? Aye, that's great. Okay, thank you, Lisa Easley. And the, and the other two, we, we also appreciate uh, Lila Hovey and Alicia Gaganian's uh, volunteering, and we're going to figure out whether they can be uh, auxiliary members or associate members and uh, have Why that at a, at a later hearing. Associate members. Well, I think the request was to appoint them full members. If they're 18, they can be full members. We just don't know whether they're 18. They're, so not, 18. they're not? You know them? Personally? Yeah. Okay. Junior, I guess. One's a junior and the other's probably a sophomore. Okay. All right. So do you want to move to appoint them as associate members? If you change, you know, I happen to be wrong. Right? Okay. So. I move to appoint them as associate members of the Children Cultural Council. Okay. Second. All right. Moving second. All in favor? Is there even such a thing as an associate member? That's a good question. You can have as uh, many as associates as you want. <laughs> as long as it's not stipulated by law, how many associates you have. Perfect. All right, great. And uh, Conservation Commission. I don't think you're here for that. <clears throat> just... David, you want to? Yeah, the Conservation <laughs> Commission has one seat available. <clears throat> We've had three candidates that have expressed interest in um, being considered for the seat. The uh, Conservation Commission has met or, or with each of the candidates and made a recommendation. Um, the three candidates were Courtney Yeck, who is currently an associate on the Conservation Commission, and Jean Bednar, who is a prior member of the Conservation Commission, and Susan Tyler, who was a prior a prior member of the Conservation Commission as well. No? Is she an agent? She's Former. <coughs> okay. She was a prior agent on, of the, to the Conservation Commission. And um, the Conservation Commission recommended last time the, uh, the approval of Jean Bednor, and um, that hasn't changed, correct? Okay. It's a one year term. One year term, okay. So I would move to appoint Jake Bednar for a one-year term to, uh, to adopt the recommendation of the Conservation Commission. Okay. Second. Move in second. Discussion? Discussion. I thought we asked them to come in so we could meet them. I think, I think Jean is here. Okay. And Courtney's here. Courtney's okay. here. Right. So all these people came to, I, I thought there was going to be a discussion. <clears throat> the floor, the floor. Well, I don't know what the format is, but we, we asked. We did. You have a recommendation from the Conservation Commission um, who did meet with the people. You have not met with them. You've just had the applications. If you had any questions for them, they're here. Or if you want to pull them up and interview them and consider them for another appointment. I thought there was some kind of format here other than we bring them all come I mean, and then. Yeah, no, in this case, we met with them and we felt the qualifications and what expertise do you want? Um, the court is in, who's been pending as an associate. And we talked to her about the fact that given her experience and expertise that she brings and how she's in our money management now, and our money management task force, and if she can show the forest and trail, that she'd be a good addition to one of the seven members. Okay. Question or any questions? I will just say that I've been on the board for a while and I had occasion to work with Jane Bednar in the past. She's been uh, very good as the conservation agent. And I think it's particularly important as we face a number of development proposals before the town that we have somebody who's familiar with all the technical parts of 
wetlands and wetlands protection and is going to provide to the board that kind of expertise. So I'm, I'm really delighted that she's willing to step forward. She used to get paid for doing that work and she's willing to do it for nothing. So I see it as a uh, great advantage to the community. Yeah, I wanted to echo, I'm really impressed that we've gotten three really s strong candidates um, for a volunteer position. Um, I, as most of you know, I've served on the Sherburn Governance Task Force Committee for about two years and there were about 10 or a dozen people who showed up at almost every meeting and S Susan Tyler was one of those and she was really made valuable and interesting contributions and has, as, as, as a local farmer, has one of the uh, mandates of the uh, Conservation Commission is stewardship of the 800 uh, acres of public land. So I think she's particularly well suited to that. This is a, fortunately it's a committee of seven, so it's good to have people with different perspectives. Um, but I was really impressed with Dr. X qualifications and all, all three candidates. Yeah. Okay. John, no? I, I, I would say for myself, I think this is a very strong field also. Um, and I think it's great to have some new blood on the committee, and I know we have a new associate member. I think that's excellent. Um, I also think the commission, in at least historically, has had sometimes a reputation of being extremely hard on applicants and hard on whether they're residents or developers, and um, I think that has changed. Um, I think I would be concerned in appointing uh, people who I think would be particularly difficult to work with. Um, and, uh, you know, I've had, a lot, I've had a lot of, done a lot of thinking about that. I've also had a lot of input from the public, too, on some of the candidates. So that's, uh, that's been helpful as well. Yeah, I would add to all this that in, uh, <coughs> appointing one out of the three is not meant to be uh, anything uh, other than a great respect for all three candidates. And that there are all kinds of opportunities here in this town to volunteer. In fact, we have quite a list of opportunities. So if someone is not appointed, we still want your service for the town. And uh, for this appointment, it's hard sitting here weighing all these good people and trying to decide what's, what's the right choice to make. But for me, having worked with uh, Jean Bedner, having some knowledge of her skills in uh, seeing them in action and knowing what the community is facing, that we, right now at this time, she would be the best choice for the town. Okay, I think you, you, you seconded Paul's motion. I did. Okay, so are we ready to take a vote? Yeah. Okay, so we're, so we're voting on the proposal to have Jean Bedner as the candidate. Hi, Peggy. Hi, um, are you willing to take comment from the the board, I think we should. The they board is. You, I mean, they're all to? here. That's fine. Do you want to? I think I think there was a lot of written commentary already. But if you want to speak, that's fine. I know we got your letter. It's in our package. <laughs> Why don't you do it at the mic? Yeah, you got to go to the mic. Yeah. That's fresh. Well, actually, we ask everybody to go to the mic. Um, Peggy Novak, Nason Hill Road. I basically just want to reiterate what I wrote in my email, which I hope you all got. Um, I first got to know Jean working on a committee with her on the land use work group, um, and I was very impressed with her knowledge um, and her, her uh, work ethic. Um, she brought a great deal of information to the committee and shared it with us. She contributed every task she took. She um, 
you know, she handled and she'd come back to the committee with an extensive amount of research for discussion. She was great to work with. She worked very well as a part of the committee. It was an excellent group. Um, I would just like to strongly urge you to appoint her to the committee. I think she's extremely well qualified. Um, I think the Conservation Commission is pretty well balanced now, and I think she'd bring um, a lot of knowledge and benefit to the committee. Thank you. Okay. I'm uh, Rick, Rick Antel, 29 McGregor Drive, and I also want to speak on behalf of Jean, and I did not write anything. Um, so. I think we all understand her knowledge and expertise, so I'm not going to emphasize that anymore. Uh, I want to talk about my work with Jean in particular on planning for the Barber Reservation. And two aspects of that are balance and planning. So in our Barber planning, um, she was certainly an advocate for environmental concerns such as biodiversity, but she also looked very hard at concerns about uh, recreational use of that property, and it does get a lot of recreational use, including horseback riding, dog walking, hiking, bike riding, running, so it gets a lot of use. So that went into the decision process. <coughs> And the other is practicality. As we all know, the, the um, costs are pretty limited within conservation, so that was a constraint we had. And also achievability of the projects that we recommended. As a result of that work, I think we made balanced decisions, and Gene's leadership really led us through that. Um, and it considered all the different criteria that I already talked about. What we ended up with was a long-range plan for the barber. Um, and I'd certainly think, as a town, I'd like to see more planning of that sort. Um, she's also persistent in not producing a plan, but also charging with our implementation of the plan. And there have been a lot of improvements at the barber over the last few years. As a teammate, she's diligent, supportive, and disciplined. I've certainly learned a tremendous amount from her. So I recommend her appointment to this position as a, poly, uh, as a positive, knowledgeable, and energetic contributor. Okay. Thanks. OK. Good evening. My name is Andrew Lauterbach, 36 Brush Hill Road. And I also want to voice my strong support for Jean Bednor's um, uh, application to be on the Conservation Commission. Like Peggy and Rick, I also got to know uh, Jean through the work on the land use working group under the, the uh, Planning Commission. Um, and there's a couple points I want to raise that may be somewhat different from those of Peggy and perhaps also Rick. One was that I was very, I didn't know Jean before, but I was very struck by her love of Sherborne and her commitment to our mission. Um, at the first meeting, the chairman of our working group asked for volunteers who would, who would take minutes um, at, our, at our meetings. And while most of us, or all of us, except for Gene, took a step backward, uh, Gene stepped forward and um, volunteered to take minutes. Now, I'm not suggesting that if she does get the position on the Conservation Commission that she'll do the same. However, to me, I was struck by that expression of her commitment um, to, to, to the mission and, um, and also to Sherborne. And then also I had the opportunity to work with Jean on one of the chapters, one of the sections that we were um, asked to, to draft. And this is one on energy, and we had to draft it from, uh, from whole cloth. There was nothing that we had to go on. 
And I was so impressed by the breadth of her knowledge on kind of a burgeoning area that towns are now uh, asked to look at. Um, but also, um, we would meet regularly together, just the two of us, um, and we put out, I thought, a very creative, innovative, and progressive uh, section uh, um, that hopefully will, will lead Sherborne to be a model for the region. Um, you know, and I think, um, lastly, I just uh, want to say that Jean also would regularly bring with her to our meetings um, brochures of uh, conferences in Massachusetts, uh, in the region, on conservation, uh, on regional planning. Um, and I, I think that us underscores how plugged in she is with this, this job, this position on the Conservation Commission, um, and how dedicated she is to, to, uh, to Sherborne and its conservation. So. So Marion and then Jim. I didn't expect such a, a bevy of enthusiastic uh, speeches, so I'll be very brief. Uh, I too want to support uh, Jean's appointment to the Conservation Commission. I want to add that uh, as the planning board member who was uh, kind of uh, trying to get the, <laughs> the many sections that the land use working group uh, was working on uh, done. Uh, it was a great group and everybody worked hard, but I think nobody worked harder than Jean uh, to actually come through things written, things researched. She really put her shoulder to the wheel and we've already heard that. But the extra thing that I think she added to the group was a very, very broad and uh, future vision of the environmental issues that the town will face. Things like global warming, water resources, you know, energy use globally. She thought not only locally, but regionally and worldwide. So I think that adds something to the Conservation Commission. Uh, Jim Murphy, 44 Bay Hill Road. Um, I'm also here to support Jean. Uh, I first met Jean uh, back when I was on the zoning board. Uh, we were under uh, almost one of the first uh, 40 Bs in the pressure of time uh, to get uh, something together uh, and be responsive. Uh, Jean was incredibly responsive, knowledgeable, hardworking. She turned uh, things around very quickly, uh, as somebody else pointed out. She uh, got us directed to the right conferences to get us up to speed on some of the conservation issues. Um, I, really, I really think that she would be a real asset. I also, having been a member of the Board of Selectmen, I think it's uh, one of the things that I always wanted to do was also support the Board's recommendations, and I thought it was important to hear that Jean had also received the, uh, the support of the Conservation Commission. So just on my personal experience and also uh, to support the Conservation Commission, I'd urge you to support Jean's candidacy and to uh, uh, vote positively for Paul and Mark's uh, motion. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Nope. Hearing none. Okay, so we'll take a take a vote. All in favor of the motion? Opposed? Okay. Good. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Yeah. Michael and uh, Gino are up. Yeah, Michael and Gino are up. So we're panels. Table. <clears throat> Paul, you want to? Do you want to break or? Okay. okay. Shifting gears to the Energy Committee from Conservation. Um, what uh, we we'll put forward in front of you got uh, in front of the board today is the fact that over the years we've been trying to work on putting some solar PV systems on some of the town buildings, um, and it's been a a bit of a trial as uh, 
you have to rely on developers to do these because of a lot of the tax advantages and incentives. Um, and so we've gone through, unfortunately, we've had to go through a series of developers since it's, um, who've come and have not worked out over the last couple of years. Um, and, um, and also, since we're small, we have to generally work through some sort of group procurement process because uh, nobody would, on their own, basically deal with the kind of scale of projects that we have in our town. Um, so as of recently, um, in the summer, the last one that we were working with that was partnered with the famed Sun Edison that uh, had financial problems. And then uh, so now we moved on to another procurement program that appeared in the summer through this Power Options Group, which is a buyer's co-op for power and gas and also does some solar work. And they worked out a, uh, they have a negotiated arrangement with a, with a solar developer that's in, the, in, the, uh, in Massachusetts. And so we were starting to work with them. Um, and they seem ready to move ahead. You don't know. The problem is the time pressure now is that in the same time as we've finally found a developer who seems positioned to actually move ahead, um, the set of incentives that are being put forth for uh, solar projects is changing. Um, and so the, and they generally has a lot of a lot of efforts to spur new technology, they tend to do some of the incentives and uh, decline over time. So the incentive for solar will be declining over time. There's a window to get into a part of the current program that we can possibly get into before the incentives decline. And when the incentives decline, it means that we would, in essence, have to pay a little bit more for the solar power. So there's some urgency to see if we want to move ahead with this developer so that we can possibly get into the current window of incentives. Um, it's not 100% sure we'd make it into it, but we have to move quickly in order to even try to have a possibility of, of falling within the current set of incentives. The option, the way the deal would work is that um, the developer basically, and it's, I guess whether it's a lease or they get an easement of deed, there's some different terminology, but in essence, we give them the roof of the CMD building for 20 years and we sign an agreement to buy all of the solar uh, energy that's generated. And at this price, it looks like it'll be 11 cents per kilowatt hour would be the price we would pay. It would be a flat price over the next 20 years based on what it can generate. Um, it's more than the use of, it's probably twice the amount of power used at the building, but it's, it's probably only about, uh, it's, it's a small, well, I don't know, maybe it's, 20% of the town's total use so that we can use the electricity in other, in other accounts in town. Um, the, uh, but it would be that 20 year period that we would be signing what's called a PPA, a power purchase uh, agreement um, that tonight I'd be asking for a motion to approve that the town would, could negotiate and sign that agreement. And then there's gonna be a secondary issue of of that we would need to add this on to the existing town meeting somehow, whether it's a new town meeting or an opening of the existing town meeting, because to do a 20-year agreement, we've been told that uh, we'd have to get town vote to do this. Um, whether this may be some creative way around it, I don't know, but uh, I don't mind. I think the discussion is good for the whole town. It's only a matter of the timing that it takes to the end of October, and it lessens the chances of falling under this current incentive window. Um, the deal of 11 cents per kilowatt hour flat over time, right now, just to, as a, in terms of the value of it to the town, essentially the, it would defray at the CMD, we're paying roughly around 13 cents a kilowatt hour that could be avoided with this project. So it would be lower cost than the power we're paying there, and that 13 cents is probably going to go up over time. And it have to be even re and that sent might have to be renegotiated at the beginning of the year, um, but it's safe to say it would be 13 plus going forward. Um, there, the half of the power that's not going to be used there would have to be funneled into other accounts in town, for which we're paying probably about nine and a half cents now, but that would probably go up to uh, 10 or 11 cents when the contract expires there. In, in essence, 
the weighted average of the two ways we could use the power between at CMD and to other accounts, we're probably looking at something that's a, at least 12 cents a kilowatt hour that we would avoid, and that would probably be increasing over time. If people use rates anywhere from 2 to 4 percent. I mean, I think it's probably, probably towards the lower end, the high. I mean, you never know what the spikes are, depending on oil prices and issues about can you bring natural gas into the northeast and all those kind of things there. But there's clearly going to be some escalation from that sort of 12 cents plus over time. The 11 cents would be a fixed price. Um, so in essence, you're starting at maybe 1,000. I mean, to be in absolute numbers, you're talking about it is that, it's 100,000 kilowatt hours. You might save at least a penny or two. You're talking about 1,000 or $2,000 a year to begin with and going up by some significant rates. Um, so it's not a phenomenal money maker. Is that, the, is that the actual usage, 100,000? The 100,000 is what it is estimated to produce. And so if you save a penny of, on that to begin with, that's a penny of that is basically $1,000. It's probably a bit more than that in the first year or so. And that'll go up to, if the prices go up by 2% a year, that'll be 1,200, then it'll be 1,400 or 1,600. So it's not, uh, it's a, uh, it's not a tremendous savings, but it's a, it's a reasonable savings, and it's also a hedge against any increasing electricity prices over time if things do spike. And for those in the bigger picture of uh, environmental benefits, you could easily be, for people, uh, you could rate it. It saves us maybe 32 tons of, uh, of carbon dioxide, some, some poundage of uh, NOx and SOx and other kind of pollutants. Um, and... Uh, those could be valued at a penny or two a kilowatt hour as well in terms of when they do pricing, when you do like carbon tax pricing and things like that too. So there's some significant environmental benefits that one can see as some sort of, uh, you could value them numerically or just the fact that it's part of your contribution to dealing with uh, global warming. So there are significant benefits there as well. Um, so, uh, so in that sense, I think the hedge is important. The savings are something even if not tremendous, but I think it's also that. And we do as part of a plan that we have to look at in a bigger picture of how we procure our power for the town in terms of whether what's the mix of uh, sources that we get it from. But this could be a, a, a reasonable component of that. Uh, and I'll bring up one other point that came up. Uh, in the contract, one issue that we probably have to review and that I had discussions with one of you about, um, it's a 20-year contract. They do have a, a purchase where you can buy your, self, buy your way out of it at some point, and then you could probably own the project yourself and get the power. Um, the, in the contract now, I was a bit surprised at the, at the high levels of what those buyout prices are. Um, and I had a very brief discussion with the developer just a half an hour ago trying to say, uh, had it as a note that I'm... I don't know what town, town council has been reviewing this PPA, and they have some changes to it. Uh, any motion made would be subject, in a sense, to changes and corrections uh, that you might come out of town council negotiations. But when I checked with them, since the price, I had notes that I seen those prices seem quite high. Um, and though the person who's after hours would have to go back and check, it seemed like that was supposedly what they would be. And uh, so that after... Uh, this is a pro so that let's say after 10 years, if we wanted to buy out of the project, if for some reason came up the concern of what happens if we somehow want to move out of the CMD building or somehow change our setup there in the next 10 years, after 10 years, the buyout cost is about $110,000. The project is barely worth that at that point. We might be saving 10 or more thousand dollars a year at that point. One could say, if it depends on the escalation of electricity prices, you'd have to make assumptions about that. I mean, it, it seems like a quite a high price. I don't know what the likelihood is that we'll move out. The project is still worth something at that point, so it's not a total loss of money. Um, but it would still be tricky. So there is, a, there, is some lot, there is some downside. That's the only one that I've thought that came up in, in discussion so far, is that issue of, uh, of that we're committing to a 20-year arrangement um, for, the, uh, for the electricity on the building there, I mean, for the rooftop on the building. Um, so, let you go with some questions. And, and just to, just to get at that last point, and I, I raise that with you, but yeah, right. it's, it's at a location where we may not know what we want to do with that property over the next 20 years, or the building may not. I don't know. 
may not I'd have certainly a like to think that the builder would like <laughs> well may not have a reasonable life in terms of the needs of the town for 20 years who knows uh, oh, really oh, i'd like to think thoughts. that way i thought i thought that was appropriately planned but uh i would be <laughs> perturbed as a resident if that wasn't true well, it's at least uh -huh. 20 years old already right no no we just did it we just built the building it's like four years Oh, Let's build the new building, building. Okay. the new building. We're not putting it on the, on the salt shed or anything else. That we're putting would fall. It, <coughs> yes. it would we're putting it on the ground. If there's any indication, it'll okay. be Okay. I'd like to forever. think that that building would have a reasonable yeah, life. Forever, you're right. <laughs> sure. Well, Paul was oh, first. I'll jump in with a couple. Yeah, I had two, two uh, points. The first is it's absolutely essential f that all of us work to reduce the society's dependence upon fossil fuel. That's been the call from the President of the United States. It's been the call from the governor. It is the reasonable way to go towards eliminating or reducing our dependence on oil. Often the oil is foreign oil, particularly in Massachusetts. So regardless of the economics, it is something that as a public policy matter, everybody should be doing. It has all kinds of important consequences, not just for our economy, but for our environment. But my second point is that for us to do a 20-year contract under uh, 30B contracts for more than three years need to be approved by town meeting. But I haven't seen a contract of any kind. There wasn't any in the packet. And if we were going to present to town meeting, so I, I would be prepared to call a second special for October 24th, one article to approve, to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into a 20 year PPA but there's no agreement that I've oh, you seen. didn't see that the draft wasn't distributed to the board i don't know what no we haven't seen anything no the um because i don't know i was like in the email exchange or i was trying to figure out is where the, the town council has it there's a, there a memo in the packet from town council dated september 21st saying that they do not recommend it in its current form and that they're nego negotiating it extensively Right. Oh, extensively? Yeah. I never saw the extensive wording yeah. or anything. But, I didn't uh, want to spend a lot of time reviewing something that council was still working on. Yeah, so the issue is, are we actually going to have a... Before I would make a motion to call a special town meeting to approve a deal, do we have a deal? That's my question. Is, do we have a contract that's... The only, the only thing that's firm is the rate, the, was the 11... Or 11.4? No, the 11 cents, right, yeah. I guess. And that, okay, I mean, right, I've been waiting to hear, I guess, where town council is in negotiating with them because town council is, the contract, I mean, if it says extensive, I haven't seen that email, that it was extensive. The last time I had seen some emails was that it seemed to be a somewhat reasonable process going on between town council and the uh, and the developer and the program about making some changes to the basically since this is being done under a power options program, which is that buyers co-op that negotiated with the developer a standard uh, PPA as well as pricing levels that are based on the size of the project. And so therefore, it seems to it's a sort of a three-party. It's our town council. It's this power options program with the developer that are all trying to converge on acceptable changes. The last I had seen was that the sense that they were going to be able to converge on something, that it wasn't, but oh, maybe there's more going on and we have to uh, revisit this. And I guess I, I don't know what's taking town, them. Count, town Council is already in negotiations with the company Select on behalf of another town. So we're coming in and starting where they're at right now. Right, we're riding their coattails. That doesn't mean that I, I don't have any estimate on when they're going to be done negotiating 
for the other town or our town. Oh, so we have no update so, on that schedule. And, yeah, and I don't think that was um, a negotiation that just started last week. I think council's been working on it. Well, my point is that if that right, I understand we your can't point call there. A, a town meeting for a contract that doesn't exist, number one. And number two, if we say, if my colleagues say, well, let's put it on there on a contingent basis and see what happens, the problem with that is that our FinCom needs to have, our advisory committee needs to have an opportunity to, to review it. The board needs a chance to review it. We, we just can't walk into town meeting with a, a lengthy contract sure. and, and ask the voters to authorize that. There needs to be a, a vetting process. And state law says for, at minimum 14 days before you can call a special town meeting. But practically speaking, we need like 30 days our town, the, the town meeting that's coming up is October 24th. That's Paul, 25 days from now, 26 days from now. It's doable, but they would have to vote next uh, on the 5th. Sure. No, that's... Um, so uh, that's why I'm asking... But there have been... Is this even feasible? Well, what's, what's feasible is getting an authorization to enter into a 20-year energy contract, and you can have a draft contract that hasn't necessarily been completely negotiated yet. It's so we're going to ask the voters to give us this authority sight unseen? Yeah. Some towns um, have given the authorization to end because they want a solar project to enter into a contract for 20 years on a power purchase agreement. Um, if you're not, I'm not saying... <laughs> I'm saying that's what you, you're going to end up doing. The likelihood is that you're going to end up doing that. It's having a, a version that's not yet signed. So you would just be asking for the authorization so that if this one happened to fall through, that you could continue pursuing another solar contract. So you want, you want an article that would authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into any contract which in the discretion of the Board of Selectmen is deemed to be in the town's best interest? I'm saying that's about the best that you can do. I thought we already yeah. did that several years ago for all yeah, the Yeah, that's what I was actually wondering whether we did. Actually, I forgot. I, I had assumed that. That's well, have you, you, has anybody been able to check whether uh, we did that a few years ago for solar? Because I have I don't have the resources. For solar. Whether or not, it, yeah, for, for, for this building, for all the town buildings. So we haven't, you know, I mean, that was another thing that we, I haven't had the time to check. Pretty sure we've already been pushing uh, solar. Since. I know you have. I don't know whether it would cover this or not. So we don't know, so we don't know yet whether something covered a few years ago. Well, that's what I've been saying is that the normal process would be to give this authorization without, so that you have it out there and then you go forward and find. What Sean's saying is it was already but, done, David, so I mean, you, you, you were not I know, so we did do the, I haven't seen it. So we have to do now, a search I, I at the last time. No, we don't have any authorization, so. You might. I, yeah. So we have to go search the, the last warrants said, anyway. to see whether we ever yeah, did that's it. A, that's a 15-minute that exercise just to yeah. skim through the last five warrants. I, it didn't get done. Yeah, hi, right. right. That, that was an open question as of some. But this is all happening quite quickly. And I understand, right, this is, let's put it this way. We, given what happened, and, and it's probably, Given even the negotiations we had back in the summer, I'd probably say, I'll confess to it being an oversight from, uh, from our ongoing work with the other developers about not checking back about the 30-year thing there. So I'll say that we, we probably should have been looking into this 30-year issue, a uh, 20-year issue, I mean, the 20-year issue months ago. Uh, so I'll uh, admit that it was a mistake not to be looking at this last year uh, when we first started even talking to the developers. Um, I mean, at some points we were looking at whether we would do the project or not, but it, it was an oversight, I'll say. Well, Sean's right, there's no issue and it wasn't an oversight. Right. I, just, I guess it just depends on We just have to go figure that out and the question is what's the contingencies that we want to do if we, if we don't have it in place? Yeah, the thing I remember we talked about was the dump. Yeah, I thought so. Yes. So if we, we didn't doing, do it, maybe it's yeah, prudent to do that for all the buildings right now. The question is whether it's the landfill only. Marcus, right. Was it just a landfill, or maybe we made it a more generic? I remember pushing this issue for the landfill. Right. There was objections to all the other roofs <clears throat> because they felt that if the roof deteriorated and we had to repair the roof and the structure was on top and right. all these complications. So I, I do remember pushing for the landfill. 
So it may very well be that this authorization, if it exists, it was for the landfill. In fact, I think there was a vote for the landfill. We definitely created an overlay district of the landfill to be a solar overlay um, zoning district, and we, and we at the same time adopted a um, solar photovoltaic special permit process. I'm sorry, no, it's a by right, uh, but, but it allowed sol solar photovoltaic subject to site plan review. That was part of our green communities application. We had to we had to do that to apply. I didn't remember that we had authorization for a, a twenty year contract as part of that, but maybe we maybe has, I just don't has, remember. has power options looked at other locations besides the C M D building? They yeah. like, they, like the dump. Like the transfer station? It's not the dump anymore, but it's the transfer many station. Many companies <laughs> have looked at that. Rain transfer station. <laughs> Sorry. There are other people people have looked at Probably the more interesting site is probably Pine Hill, which has gone back and forth over whether the roof can yeah. do it, the roof is going to need to get repaired. There's somebody in town who I don't know if he's actually here today or that is actually so, Hi. hi. Uh, I've only met by phone. Uh, uh, that we're going to try to look at, the, uh, look at Pine Hill um, again. And even, albeit, if we don't fit in this incentive program, the next one will be significant. When does that expire? January. It's in January. You have to get a certain amount in place by, I don't know the specifics, but you've got to have a certain amount of the project by January 8th, by January 8th and then completion by a certain so, time. But we so, could, it's so a good we slide. So we're not, we're not going to pay anything up front for this, right? We're going right. to basically give them the use of the roof for 20 years. We're going to buy the power for 11 cents right. for 20 years. Yes. And we, and we don't have to run another wire to get rid of the other 50, right? We, this all goes back to utility and we get credits of some, some it gets It gets done to other accounts. There might be, I can't tell if the, we don't if have the to, I don't know if the price no includes a little no bit of an upgrade. Right. installation beyond what we're talking no, about. No, they might have to be an upgrade of the transformer I there. Uh, I mean, except for the I liability think, of the 20 years that. that I think it sounds like a good project. I, I mean, I, the building's fairly new. Right. It, most of these solar projects I've looked at where we were buying the panels did not make sense to me. Here we're not going to own it. It so makes a lot of sense to me. What if it's I, not 11 cents, Michael explained, if these uh, incentives go away. Oh, I understand. Yeah, if we wait. Well, but the question is, right, the question is what contingency plan do we, can we do here till we figure out whether we need the 30 years and to, or to plan for adding on a second town meeting so that we could see whether the contract even works out. I mean, we're here tonight, you could revisit next time, and we still have to, and I agree with what Paul raises, and which I wasn't aware of that maybe there's more difficulties than I knew of, or been informed of, of what is it gonna to take to get a contract? And maybe the, uh, I mean, it's, it's supposedly, I don't know how many other towns have used it or not. I mean, it was a negotiated standard contract, but maybe there are some problems with it um, that will make it insurmountable anyway to even do a deal. So, uh, or we want too many changes, and they're going to say, forget it, it doesn't fit within this program, goodbye, there are, other town there are other places to deal with it, to deal with this thing here, and we've done our best, and, and we just have to move on and see what it costs if we uh, go into the next set of uh, incentives. Is one, is one of the issues that they're dealing with the contingency on the contract taking effect if the incentives are in place, because that obviously affects the financing. Oh, yeah, right. I Whatever pricing right. we'd have to do would have to be based on that. They fit in that window. The 11 cents right. would have to fit in there. We don't even know. I, nobody's even knows what the – if we don't fit into this, to this window right. where they're offering the 11 cents, the policy is not set yet. So there will be no price available for the next window of incentives. That's under development now. So we would just have to wait and see. What it looks like, sometimes the incentives go down, but the cost of, of, of putting in PV have, have also gone down, so sometimes the impact isn't so horrible. For example, the price we're getting now of 11 cents is actually better than what we were offered two years ago right. by a developer. So it's, it's not the end of the world on all this, but it's, it, but it's an interesting window with some clear benefits that whether it's worth our jumping through some hoops or doing some contingency planning for meetings or getting this contract to see whether we can get it done, to see whether we could make it work. I mean, sure, there could be a, there could be a PV breakthrough in two years, and, we should, and then you'll want to uh, say, oh, geez, we could have waited. Um, but I think it's important to get the benefits now, and the environmental benefits are important to start now. Um, but it's a matter of how many hoops we've got to jump through and what they are uh, to keep this thing alive while we play out whether the contract can be negotiated. Sure. Yes. 
So I got a couple questions and probably a couple other concerns. But first, I wanted to recognize a friend of mine who's a resident and probably our foremost expert, uh, Saban Rossi, who is now in contact with Michael and helping us with probably Pine Hill, I think. Yeah, I, I Can you introduce that. yourself? And yeah, sorry. My name is Saban Rossi. Uh, I live at 57 Ivy Lane. And I've been in conversation with uh, the town for about 18 months. Uh, I have uh, 14 years of experience in energy. I was one of the founders of an oil and gas exploration production company that uh, was taken public. Uh, both in Toronto and in London, but operating in the former Soviet Union. And over the past three years, I've indulged in renewables in Massachusetts and actually slept Brian Errors currently building uh, three of my projects. Um, 30 second snippet, we come at no cost to the town, our services are purely consultative and we drive a competitive environment. So select, for example, at one of our projects at Malton Catholic, when they approached by themselves, not through power options, uh, gave a proposal of almost 10 cents uh, per kilowatt hour and through the competitive process came down to 5.9 cents. So power options, while it's a good program, and we're using it for Mount Alberta High School in Newton, um, Blessed Sacrament in Walpole, Malden Catholic, possibly Montreux School in Medfield. Um, the time is running short right now to get anything done under SRF 2, and if you were to postpone until October 24th, well, I don't think it's the ideal program. Uh, interconnection application timeframes would probably be prohibitive in allowing you to get into this program under SRF 2. Who knows what will happen with the pricing after that. But my argument and, and my position on solar, while I do have a, a financial benefit uh, in the services that I bring, not coming from the town, but coming from the winning developers. Competitive process is what drives solar. There's tons of solar players in Massachusetts. They come and go, as has been discussed. A lot of developers are a uh, bit fly by night. There's a handful that are well vetted. Select is definitely one of them. Um, there's a ton of opportunity, and I've been speaking to the school as well. Uh, we've got about 14 or 15 municipalities that we've worked with. Um, but just listening to this, I, I don't see if you postpone until October 24th how you would be able to get into this program, um, or even if you still can't get in, just keeping from the time frames that you're looking at for um, paperwork with the utility, essentially. So that, so that, that kind of answers that question. Well, no, the or, I, have I have a different impression from talking to Solek, the developer, <clears throat> that whereas there's some uncertainty, they felt that if the, if the contract wasn't signed until then, but if there's, but even before then, if we're basically moving towards agreement, that they felt there's still a chance of, of fitting it in. Sure. Uh, but obviously there's some uncertainty. So I don't. So I think that if we tacked it on to the current town meeting date, there's still some chance of fitting into this SREC two extension. Um, so, but it's it's not guaranteed. But it's a matter of whether we want to at least try. Right. Um, and whether the, if, we can, if we can negotiate a contract that, pe that we feel comfortable with. And, and I'd only base that on October 24th for interconnection application, although when you're looking at 30 to 60 days, and then you still have to build, and you need substantial completion by right. January 8th. Uh, I, I think that the town should go for it, is, is my opinion. Select's great, it's a great opportunity, but if you push it off much further, you probably lose a chance. Okay, no, that seems like right. Either we do we figure out what contingency we do right. for the 24th for the town meeting on however we do it on that day. Um, and, and whether we even, uh, I mean, it's an interesting, I mean, we still, one issue is to just check whether we have some past vote that would cover this, obviously. But even then, uh, in the meanwhile, whether, right, how specific, the, and it's even a question of how specific on that date do you make a, a motion, whether it's for, can the selectmen, can the select board be approved to do a 20-year, up to a 20-year deal on solar on any building as a general statement yeah, from the motion. town or not? Um, and whether that's something you want to do anyway as an add-on, and at least we have something in place. Well, we don't want to get involved with school buildings because school buildings should be under the jurisdiction of the school committee or they should be part of the program. So I don't want to say all municipal buildings, but if you will, can I, Here's a possible motion, which would be uh, first to uh, request the town administrator to determine whether or not the town has previously voted to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into power purchase agreements 
for solar power. Or a lease. Oh, okay. Oh, do you, you have to add in lease? Power. You use the power. I know, but I'm saying whether we also have to enter whether the power purchase includes a lease. Is that what you're? No. I'm just, okay. So I'll back up. Just off. It's complicated. I got four or five paragraphs. It was oh. the first. Paragraph. I would <laughs> Second paragraph would be if the report of the town administrator is that there has not been such a vote, then to call for a second special town meeting to take place on October 24th to follow the conclusion of the first town meeting of October 24th. Third paragraph would be to open the warrant for that special town meeting at this time and to close it at Monday at 5 p.m. And third, to insert in the warrant of that special town meeting the following article, which would read, to see if the town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into a 20-year power purchase agreement for solar power for the CM&D garage building or to take any other action related thereto. Do you want to you look generalize it? You done? Yeah. You made that motion, right? I'll yes. second that motion. I think we need to reopen the agenda to add this to the agenda as something we weren't able to know about 48 hours in advance. We don't have anything out here about opening a warrant on a new town meeting. You have consideration of solar energy project. I think we should. You could add it to the. the agenda. Yes. Uh, so I withdraw that motion, and because of the exigency of time, given that there's a deadline in January, and I know all my other towns are scrambling with this also. So, Sherburn should join the club. Okay, and, and I think this was something we couldn't have known about. 48 hours we in require advance. 48 hours in advance. In fact, I think I just learned about it this afternoon myself. So uh, do we have a second on Paul's motion to open the uh, agenda? Sure. I'll okay. second that too. All in favor of amending the agenda. Okay. Great. Now your motion is in order, I think. Okay. So I made the motion. I'm making the motion I just said. And I said, Don't make me say it again. I'll second it again. <laughs> <laughs> Of a time loop. <laughs> Any discussion? Is there some reason to expand it beyond the CMD building? Well, I didn't because first I don't want to get messed up with the schools, and the next likely issue is going to be Pine Hill School. The custody of that building is in the hands of the school committee. We don't have the school committee here. I don't want to step on their toes. Secondly, if we deal with all municipal buildings, that gets us into the library and the library trustees. Would they the police take station. the police station? We don't have the police chief here. You, if you want to win a vote at town meeting. No, and none of them could happen before while well, this matters. This only matters because you're just about ready to go, right? All right, but I think that I'm just trying to think of the cycle going forward. Let's say if something ha without stepping on the toes of the other departments, like the school department, whether, even if you have to defer to them, whether there still might be an issue of where you have to weigh in some way on a, on a school building. But we can do that at spring, spring town. We can do spring town meeting. Like, we can have a, okay. I don't think we're excluded. No, I, okay, I guess as long as we plan it. No, I'm just trying to think of the cycle of that we catch each meeting, and, or it depends how quickly, when, or whether something comes up in the, in the, in the summer. Uh, for another town, for some other place, but I guess we'll just have to well, fit spring it. spring comes before summer, so we'll be good. We'll have spring town meeting. School committee might have the authority to do this anyway without town meeting, meeting would they? A town meeting? Probably not the purchase power agreement for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I mean. Yeah, I would really recommend focusing this. Fine, no problem. Yeah, I would say I, I feel really jammed on this. I feel like we're, we're kind of, you know, I'm hanging off the edge of the diving board or whatever it is, um, whatever the right metaphor is, because I don't, I don't feel like, I feel like it's getting to us late and there's a lot of unknowns, but at least this is a structure where we can choose to pull the plug before 
October 24th if we need to, if, we, if the agreement doesn't look good, if it's something we don't feel we can bring to town meeting, if uh, the timing doesn't work out, whatever sure. it is. No, I agree. I mean, I feel the same way. I, I mean, I think one of the questions that we'll get is, did you talk to anybody else? Right. The competitive oh, I think he can answer that. I mean, we've right. been dealing with, right. I mean, the pro there's always... There's always developers out there who say they can do the competitive, and we've gone through, there's the MAPC, we've gone through a number of competitive processes, the one you could defend in the sense that the power options program, whereas maybe some people didn't think it was so good, but they basically went out to bid themselves <coughs> on behalf of a fairly, they're a large buyer co-op, uh, whether they... Uh, Limited uh, to nonprofits and municipalities. Mm -hmm. And they went out to bid and negotiated this kind of, these prices. So, and the contract, basic contract. So one could say that this was part of a, and the past programs that we, we generally in the past we were working through programs that were competitively bid as a way to address that issue. Um, whether there's some developer process such as what, uh, uh, Sabin, excuse me if I can pronounce Sabin, uh, suggests might be another way of doing it too through an individual. That's another option, uh, that one. and. Um, but at this point, I don't know whether it's unclear what you would get that's any better, but at least this is part of, in terms of my own thinking about it, it was a competitively negotiated deal um, by this group that's not insignificant. So that I feel it gives us some protection, the price isn't, isn't too bad. I mean, it's, it's, um, and, uh, I don't know if even you would agree that the price of the 11 cents at this point. I would use the point. word fair if I was presenting fair. this to town. Yeah, fair. <laughs> it, uh, 11 cents is, is good, but the problem with our options is it's not competitive in the sense that it only buys from one supplier. No, no, this is different. From, I'm talking not the solar. I'm not. I'm only talking the solar program, not their other program. Um, no, I agree, and it's based on the size of the system. So right. They had, they basically negotiated prices based on the different sizes, and it's tricky when you have 100 kilowatts. Not a very attractive size. So I would say that that it's had some due diligence, it's had some competitive process built into this thing, and that the 11 cents is a, is a fair price um, to do it, and whether it's a little off by a, a few mills or something like that versus the, the cost of delay, and the fact that it certainly isn't going to get any better uh, with some of the incentives uh, declining. Um, and at some point, though, maybe there'll be technological improvements, but whatever. So I do think that there's a, a defendable story that I feel comfortable with in terms of uh, where we are. You can't say defendable at town meeting either. It's got to be a good idea or not. Okay. <laughs> I'll get the language cleared up. Yeah. Uh, okay. hey, so, so, Michael, you mentioned before um, what you'd use about half the power at CMD and the other half would go back into the grid? Or where's the it? way you can do it is uh, you can allocate it to other accounts that the town has. So, so, we, so would, we, would we could send it against the, the, the town hall or, uh, or the police station uh, and all the other places there, and we could use up the power. What I was wondering was if we go to an electric vehicle fleet at some point down the road, is that a use for the excess? Is that, does that, sure. is that a way to calculate savings? I mean, it, would, it, would it be less expensive for us to do that because we had our you own can allocate. Service? I think you have the if flexibility. If they charge that the CMD garage, which I assume they would. That's because what the, the reason the other buildings are more expensive than CMD is because you still have to pay the delivery charge going through the grid. But if it was used right on site. No, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Basically, it's whatever is the surplus over what's used. So, so, if, so, we, if, so if we did convert a vehicle fleet eventually, like everybody's going to have to do at some point, to at least partly hybrid or electrical vehicles, that's going to be a, another advantage, I guess. Yeah. So there's no distribution charge if you use it at the site? Right. Or oh, there's still some of it because there's a, uh, the, uh, a bill for a commercial facility has a, a demand charge based on the peak demand as well as a sort of a flat fee based on your energy use. You cannot, you don't, you might be able to defer a little bit of the demand charge, but I don't know if you want to get into all those little details. But I mean, so you can maybe knock off a little there, but you can you can get rid of part of the distribution charge. It's usually a big number. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, more more of it is not. You can't knock off a good chunk of that. Um, but who knows? You never know what the timing is of solar versus when the peak demand is at the building. Uh, but that's a whole other complexity. And we'll go back to his motion, which seems. Well, when you talk about locking us into that site, so I mean, other things have been talked about for CM&D just as you know, brainstorming ideas, whether it ends up going to another location, you know, more remote in town because that's a pretty central location, maybe a more valuable piece of property, 
or some municipalities contract out their CMND services so they don't actually maintain a CMND building. But as long as we had this contract, we either have to buy it out or we just have to keep that building for some other purpose with the with the panels on right. the roof until the 20 years was done, right? right? Right, or at some point, right? Obviously, there's a buyout and maybe you can negotiate. I mean, they have a, a, a buyout. Well, sorry, buyout. Yeah. They have a buyout there, but I don't know at some point that they would probably negotiate where they'd even be. It seems like a very high level there, but I would think at some point they might even be willing to negotiate that at some point because I can't believe but it. But at least that becomes another factor to think about whether it's a good deal or not. It is how likely do we think it is that we're going to be maintaining that building for 20 years on that site for that use. It sounds like we've maintained the building based on what at least some people are saying, but I, don't, I just don't know. Yeah, we'll turn it into a skating rink for the town. I, I got a question about rates. Oh. Uh, maybe Saban can answer this. It, it sounds like we've negotiated nine and a half at, at some of the other buildings. I don't know what Pine Hill's paying. But does this put us at a disadvantage where we're are we going to have a weaker case on our negotiated rate for what we're purchasing because we're purchasing less later? Uh, no, because energy is in price really in bulk. The same with oil. If you buy one barrel or a million barrels, you're paying the same price per barrel. So there's no sort of secret volumetric discount in pricing. Um, I only see upside um, from this whole opportunity. Really. I mean, it's, a, it's a very small opportunity. It's, there's producing an excess, there's even virtually net meter at other sites. I don't know, just being consumed on site there. But uh, yeah. it's, it's a great, uh, I think if, if we can sneak it in this time frame, it's, it's a great opportunity. I don't know if you want to continue on that model moving forward or if you do, but I would, I would try my yeah. hardest to get it done if it could be possible. Can I suggest? It's less a volume and achieving another demand profile. I think we've got to negotiate our calories, which is another complexity that right. we don't have to go into. Motion and Made and seconded. Yes, yeah, so we've got a motion pending, so we're kind of discussing it up here at this point. Um, Can I suggest, though, this motion is limited to one building, and if we have expertise here, uh, I, for one, have been very desirous of having solar panels everywhere on every municipal building and on the landfill and every place we can put it. So there's a, a, a lot of potential projects out there, and if we have uh, expertise here within this community, we ought to draw on as much as we can help we can get this project in order to meet this deadline. We've got to go with we've got to go with what we have. We we we've got to run with the ball now that we have it in our hands. So, uh, but it's great that we've got somebody there. And I, what I'm suggesting is that there's lots of opportunities here. Just a question about the timing of this um, <laughs> with your motion. If you were to open a second town meeting, we have a public hearing scheduled for next Wednesday, if you know, the 5th. Would this be able to, would we be able to hear this warrant article as well? Well, the funny thing is you won't have advertised it. Well, we advertised the public hearing. We didn't advertise a specific warrant. But the, the notice that, at town hall. The notice that um, went out was very... I'm just wondering, do we have to have a second public hearing? If, or can we have it as part of our October 5th public hearing? I mean, in fairness, um, Barbara would have just got this question this afternoon. So I don't... I, don't I, I mean, I, I have a question about that, George, just because of what the notice said. The notice said the warrant is available at right. Town Hall. So the text of the article is available. And it will be tomorrow. Well, but not when the notice went. Right, not when the notice went. Which, which by our bylaw has to be separate notice and have a separate public hearing. Not Town Council, but that would be Then notice. you can't do it. You can't do it for the fifth. We don't have, we don't yeah. have the time. What? For the original the meeting about two weeks ago. Yeah. For the weeks. advisory they came. The late came last. They were arrived in households last week. Yeah, we got it on Thursday. When we got it? Yeah, at least a week. Remember, this is a contingent motion. The first part is that the town administrator is going to check to see right. whether we already have this authority. And if the answer is yes, oh, yeah, we, we don't that. have any changes. Right. We don't have right. any articles. We don't have a right, second. Right, but if the answer is no, then we do have a change, and then they've got to do their thing. Right. But, but right. that doesn't change our, our decision up here. Right. This, but this is a contingent fallback. Because hopefully, I do recall that we did have some votes to authorize 
something, but I think it was at the landfill. It was 2011 the for the <coughs> transfer station only. And, and the notes say that there was no objection to that, no discussion of other places. Okay. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Do we want to take a vote? Yes. I would just make one comment, which is in addition to the advisory, uh, capital budget I assume needs to weigh in on the numbers for a project like this. It's, it's a no large enough project. I guess we're not making a capital payment. But There's no capital expenditure. So I guess it's just going to be advisory that needs to weigh in. So, yeah. Right. Okay. Anybody who wants to talk at town meeting? Yep. Okay. Mary, you got something to okay. add here? I, uh, just a very quick detail. Uh, the, the warrant, as you read it, includes a time frame, 20 years. Yes. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, what's the 20 years based on, and do you want to lock yourself into the time frame? You're not locking yourself into any particular yes. other aspect of the contract. This is up to 20 years. They would do so uh -huh. You ever seen 25 years sometimes? Um, the law for 25, 15 is unusual, but 20 years is a standard update. So, yeah, so and it's based most on the interest of the investor. Because but most investors are generally okay with 20 as opposed to 25? They, or have they, you seen? They would look at 20, and then there's always a question, and we talked about this the other day. Yeah. Um, we haven't seen yet a 20 year lifespan of solar really in Massachusetts, so that's a bit of an unknown at the end. But the point is, at the end, there should be, if I look through the PPA contract, mm -hmm. um, there should be, uh, the building should be left in the same condition as it was prior to solar being on it. Mm. But there's always an argument that you can say, you know, feel free to come take it away. And there's a cost to them to do that. And, and you could always argue that had it kept and the light will continue on and you'll be producing energy either for free or for reduced yeah. rate. So, but it's, you know. What well, would you consider a friendly amendment of amending it to up to 25 years? It sounds like that's the time frame that we, the 20 years is what you've been that's what, we, that's what we've, we've seen been in our agreements. I don't think yeah. I've seen too many that went to 25 but, but already. But you say up to 25 years. You don't need the wording from the article. You can approve the wording of the article at the time that you approve the warrant. True. Uh, so I mentioned 20 years because I believe in going to the voters with something specific and rather than something so amorphous. Like we had the same discussion about the, what location. We go there saying anywhere, anytime, any purpose, just authorize the Board of Selectmen. You might have pushback. So yeah, we haven't seen the, the three other the two previous developers, I think we're, slot, we're doing 20 years too. So I don't think we're losing much. This is for the purpose of trying to get this specific yeah, deal right. through, which is a 20 year deal. Right. In the spring, we can do whatever we need to do to provide broader authority. I think it's a good point, but I just, it doesn't sound like it applies here. Right. And, and, and I suppose if we got to town meeting floor and there was a reason to amend it, you'd amend it on the right. town meeting floor. So how about up to and including 20 years? <clears throat> yeah, fine. Do, do we have a second on his amendment? Second. Okay. Okay. Now let's vote. All in favor of this. Concoction. Thank you. <laughs> You're right. So the issue, so David, the question is who's, how do we follow up in terms of how realistic, whether we can get the lawyer, or is it Richard Holland or whatever it is? The lawyer. To, to our lawyer. Our lawyer. You got him? Oh, lawyer. <laughs> who's the lawyer? <laughs> Some lawyer that we hear about. I've never him met him. him. Uh, to, to say how significant these issues are in terms of, uh, and I guess I'll I'll call the developer tomorrow to see ask him from his side whether uh, they're seeing that there's much any how substantive the issues are on the contract, so we don't spend a lot of time and energy over the fact that why don't we come to ask closure. the developer how specific the issues are? Why don't we ask our I wouldn't talk counsel. to the developer again. Yeah. I why wouldn't talk to the developer counsel. again. Fine. The question is, is that before we go to it, right? We need to get a, a better sense of how real the issues are. Right. Right. He's just going to jump all over that tomorrow morning. Good. That's what I want to hear. Because I don't want to spend any more time on it myself. You just emailed. Um, it's all over already. You emailed Richard Holland already? Well, he answered just about an hour ago. Excellent. Yeah. Yes. All right. Good. Um, so we had another thing on the. Thanks, Michael. And no, no. Gino. Thank you, guys. Sorry. That was great. Rush. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we had another issue, which was um, whether we would release a. 
opinion from our town council concerning uh, an interpretation of the zoning bylaw. The, the opinion was included in your packets, I believe, today. Yes. Did everybody see this? It's, it's, yep. It looks like an email from Diane. Um, and, and the last two pages of it contain, or last, two of the last three pages, not including the blank last page, contain uh, our town council's opinion. I move that we release the memo and that memo only as requested by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Do you have a second on that? Second. I second it, and I have a question for town council uh, that mm -hmm. certainly want to do it with the ZBA is requesting it. I just want to make sure town council is comfortable with us releasing it. I don't think there's anything in the right. I didn't see anything either. But I agree with Paul, though. This should be released in the form of a memo from town council, right. not this email exchange. Absolutely. Right. You got that? Not, not releasing the email. We're releasing the, just the memo from town council. Just the memo. So, so what, in whatever, did you send it as, a, as a memo? Uh, I did not send it as an email. Can you, can you, can you resend it, it on just a piece of paper stuff. without any other stuff? And then I'll not forward it on the email. Okay. Thank you. All right. So it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Releasing this. Okay. Now, now we have to consider. Do we have anything else? We have we have minutes before we go into, and we have selectman reports. I guess. Yeah, I got something. Okay, selectman reports. Paul. You may recall we had talked a little bit about the Smart Streets program. Smart Streets program happens to be well financed by the state. I had the impression that it would be of little value to communities like Sherburn because it means widening roads and the whole concept of smart streets is to make every street friendly to pedestrians, bicyclists, automobiles, a variety of, of uh, users. So I thought it would have no, no real application to uh, Sherburn. But I've discovered a number of communities are very excited about it, and I'm trying to figure out why were they so excited. So I wanted to uh, share with you uh, some comments that come out of another town. I'll just uh, paraphrase. Then in another town, there was a request for the Board of Selectmen to ad adopt a complete streets policy. The po proposed policy is based on the state standards and very similar to that of other communities. Please note that the, this only commits the town, quote, to the maximum extent practical design, construct, operate, and maintain all streets and ways in a manner to provide for comprehensive and integrated street network of facilities for all users. It does not mean that this will be done for every street. Many streets are too narrow and it is not practical to do so. The main reason to adopt this policy is to make the town eligible for a grant of $50,000 in the first year to develop a complete streets prioritization plan and in the second year of up to 400,000 for construction. <clears throat> so there is a state program that would give us $50,000 in year one, 400,000 in year two to do essentially planning and implement if possible. Is this something that we could, is there any place, let's put it another way, is there any place in the town that we could make use of this money? The idea is we're always looking for ways to get money. Here's the state is willing to provide $450,000 to Sherburn for us to study, look at this, and so on. 
as I said, I thought it was not suitable for the town given our narrow roads, but not every road in Sherburne is narrow. And not every road is not adaptable to things like a, a bicycle lane and, and the like. So do we have any interest? Maybe we should put it on a, a future agenda for discussion, absolutely. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure there is an answer to that, Paul, and maybe we would want to invite Gino in because I'm sure he's done a lot of thinking about that. But, David, can we put that on an agenda, an yeah. upcoming agenda? Yeah. Yeah, there's state funding available for sidewalks and bicycle lanes. That's, I know advisories had looked at proposals of, for the last couple of decades, and it's... I know Dexter Drive would be a good location for that, but it's a very short, hilly street. I'm not sure there's any other place that's wide enough to do all this. That's yeah. about 80 feet wide. It's one of your favorite streets in town. Yes. <laughs> I burn it up. Still need paving? No. Jeff Seal. All right, so what's, what's next? Paul, you have more? <laughs> Anybody else? I had a question um, I, with the, the drought and uh, water shortage, um, having the possibility of drying up wells, I was wondering if the Board of Health or anyone in town has communicated common sense things to do to conserve water. And I understand from Sean that may have been discussed at a Board of Health meeting, if that's correct. I just I hadn't seen any communication whatsoever. I think Diane circulated something in response to your question mm -hmm. yesterday. But maybe, Diane, can you summarize? Do you remember? The one thing I saw was on Next Door Sherburn from Peggy no, no, Holm. No, this was from Next Peggy Door. Peggy Holm had a very good comment. But, uh, a Robert Johnson to, um, had a good Ellen Hyman, she came down into the office, and she informed me that all of the Board of Health members asked her to do was to provide a link on the website that residents could go to. And it actually, was a, then it would became a state website and talked about wells and if you were a private well owner and gave you advice there. But that was all that the Board of Health asked her to do was to provide a link. There was nothing else coming from the health department to residents. Oh, I saw a memo that they posted something on their web page. Yes, and it said to go to that link. It's just yes. a link. It's just a link. What might be more valuable for the viewers is to know that people's wells in town are running dry. Right. And if you don't know how deep your well is, you should find out. But more importantly, the sections of town that are running out of water. Um, I don't know how you can predict it, because you can't really predict where to drill very, very well in town. So Is it based on the depth of the well? Does shallower it, wells it, run dry? Some or? of it's based on the depth of the well. Some of it's based on the hydrology of different areas. Uh, if you're near where the fields is going to be, you're not going to run out of water. There's a huge, huge, huge amount of water down there. But I know there's a couple of wells on Ivy Lane or in that area that are dry. I saw two permits for that area already for emergency well replacement. And if, you, if your well runs dry, the problem is you're not going to get one for a while because the rigs are out to next spring right now. Um, because obviously it's happening everywhere in New England, but there's not really much relief coming either. So people should be slightly concerned, certainly conserve. Uh, okay. But I don't, the, the, the Board of Health, unfortunately, doesn't have, it's not like they know when people's wells are running up. Right. They don't really know until a permit comes through, which would, which would generally only come through once they have a well company that's, they're contracting to come in and do it. Is there emergency water supply that the town has available if somebody's well runs dry? Do we have a, a location where somebody can go fill up jugs or whatever they need to do? Unfortunately, the town doesn't have any good wells. Uh, this one's pretty well tapped. The fire station's well is junk. Uh, CM and D's well's okay. Uh, but I, I don't, we don't really have anything. That's producing. Productive that, yeah, that, that we have that we could set up. I, I mean, if we got worse, I guess we'd have to do something. But I don't know how we'd do it. Most of, most of the good wells in town are not town owned. Okay. Thanks, Sean. Hopefully That's helpful. We'll get some rain. Let's see. Anybody else with the selectman report? No. Okay. Uh, we have minutes from July 27th. Diane is getting us very caught up. We're 
What are we only about one? Well, a couple of you know? sets sets behind. Good. I'm waiting for them to come forward. Well, we have to make an edit to these. Okay. Because on page one it says, "Move to approve the agenda as amended." Mover, none. Second, none. You can't um, have a motion made by none. Okay. And seconded by none. I'm sorry that got by me. Because. Mr. Nunn hasn't been elected so, yet. So, so you'll add that in? you just yeah, go back I to the will. tape? Of course I will. I'll okay, go back, go back to the, the tape, tape and add it in. All right, anybody have any other changes here? I, there was three minor typos on page three that I've given to Diane already. They're right here, the period this and, and I'd move approval with, okay. I'll okay. Those changes. Second. All in favor? Aye, okay, we've approved the uh, July 27th minutes subject to those few changes. And uh, now we have a request to go into executive session, or, or a schedule of an executive session. Um, I move that the Board of Selectmen enter into executive session not to return to open session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation where an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the town's litigating position. And the chair so declares pursuant to General Laws Chapter 38, Section 21A3, with respect to the following pending cases, Stevens versus Board of Health, the Fields at Sherman versus CBA, and Conservation Commission versus the Fields at Sherman. I need a second on the motion and a roll call vote. Second. Second by Mr. Colleen. We will now have a roll call vote. Mr. Colleen. Aye. Mr. Brandon. Yes. Mr. Jan. Aye. Mr. Durancis. No. Okay, and I will be aye. Having passed by a vote of four to one, the open session is now closed. We will not be returning to open session. The Board of Selectmen is now in executive session. Okay.